for this decor piece, I took inspiration from this vase or planter pot I saw at Target in the Studio McGee new line. I love the texture on it and I knew I could easily recreate this using things I already have lying around. Now I know this Dollar Tree planter is not the same shape, but I still think it works to get that overall look. To start out, I'm going to take this acrylic gesso. I've never used gesso before, but I see a lot of art channels do that, and I really liked it for adding a primer base to a project, and we'll definitely continue using this. The outside of my planter got two coats, and I gave the inside one really light coat about a third of the way down. Next, I'm gonna use this shelf liner, which has the exact same texture pattern that was on the Studio McGee vase. At first, I was going to wrap it around, but realized that didn't really work so well. So instead, I cut the liner into two inch strips. Then using Mod Podge, I started applying the strips. The shape of this vase causes them to overlap a little bit in order to cover the whole surface. In the last strip, I only added on the top half to cover that bare section. This can be the back that no one's going to see. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I wanted to wrap the top of the shelf liner inside of the pot. This wasn't working well at first, and what I realized I was doing was adding too much Mod Podge and not allowing time for it to get tacky and hold that strip down. Since the pieces folding over are so tiny, it really needed that tack to stay in place. After this layer is dry, I'm taking ivory paint and gave the vase two coats. To get that glossy look that the Studio McGee piece has, you could add polyacrylic or a spray sealer or even Mod Podge. I used a gloss Mod Podge and that's it for this one. Okay, so this next project was pretty much a fail, but I still wanted to share it with you guys and maybe explain where I think it went wrong, see if you have any suggestions or advice to see how I can kind of get that end result I was envisioning. These are the products that I used um, on this vase and I thought it was gonna turn out really cool. It looks like it would have a really cool like rust effect or a really cool patina effect and it just didn't turn out that way at all. So let me know in the comments, have you used these products? I got them from Hobby Lobby. I know you can find them at most craft stores also, but it just, it didn't work the way I thought it would. So let's get into that and I will show you where it went wrong. First things first, I have this large vase. It barely fits in the frame. This is from West Elm, originally $40 and I got it at a garage sale last summer for maybe five or $10, I can't really remember. I wanted to make this into a sculptural piece because I have it under the little plant nook I built along my Ikea built-in wall. If you haven't seen it, I will link that. But to get the sculptural look, I'm using this instant paper mache. I had a lot of firsts going on with this project, which is also probably why it didn't turn out so great, but all you need to do to use this paper mache is add water. I really enjoyed working with this product. Next, I'm gonna start adding the paper mache to the vase. This is definitely a messy process, and I would recommend keeping your fingers wet to prevent the paper mache from sticking to you and lifting up a section you just added. So let me show you kind of what I was going for. I saw these cool vases on Pinterest and thought I could get a similar look with the paper mache. First of all, the paper mache, even though you can sand it once it's dry, will never get you that super smooth look. Or at least I couldn't get it to look very smooth. I think polymer clay would have been a much better option. So let's jump ahead a bit. I let the paper mache dry overnight and now I wanna add a cool rust patina look to it. I picked up these Modern Masters Metal Effect paints, which were not cheap by the way, and I thought it was going to give me that really cool aged look in patina. Ignore those spots, I initially had a different idea, but the way it works, you add two coats of the primer, which is this rust color paint, let that dry and then add two coats of the metal paint. You have to shake these up really well because there are real bits of metal in them, which is what is supposed to cause the effect. I used iron for the main color so it would look rusted. And I will also tell you a paintbrush did not work well for the metal paint, or at least it didn't for me. 
Look how patchy it is. So I switched to a sponge and that gave a lot more coverage. And maybe it should have been a thin base coat of paint and that would have helped give more of the effect I wanted. I'm really not sure. Now we're going to add the rust effect, or at least try to. For this step, you add another layer of the metal paint, and while the paint is still wet, you spray the activator onto the spots you want to rust. I also thought this would work a little bit quicker. It takes about a half an hour to start changing, which the box does say that. I just didn't believe it, I guess. After waiting about an hour, here's what it looks like. I don't know about you guys, but this does not look like rust to me. Maybe the very beginning stages of rust, but I was expecting more of that red tone. So here's where the project really went south. I started adding the copper metal paint because I knew that would at least give me the tone I was looking for, but I didn't want the whole thing covered in copper and it was metallic, so I layered the, the iron color on top. I don't know what I was trying to do, you guys, but this just does not look good. So what do I do? Well, I take a scraper and hammer and I take off all of the paper mache and I painted it solid black. That's where I'm at right now with this project. Basically, it just got a paint job and I wasted a lot of hours, but please let me know. Have you tried this stuff? Am I doing something wrong? Or maybe I just need to keep experimenting. This project was also a fail, but not as epic of a fail as the last one. I was at least able to save it and do something a little bit different than my original design. I'm taking this Dollar Tree planter, which is honestly super flimsy, but the bottom comes off for water drainage. And what I wanna do with this one, I need the drainage holes with the bottom left on. So taking my spade bit, you could also use a regular drill bit or even a knife. I just need to add some holes. I also have this little saucer from Lowe's that I'm going to add two holes in as well. Next, taking E6000, I'm going to attach the smaller saucer to the bottom of the planter, and here's where I made my first mistake. I also should have glued the removable part from the original Dollar Tree planter in place, but I didn't think about that. The next day when the glue was dry, I'm taking this lightweight spackle and going to spread it all over the planter. I was trying to speed up the dry process here, and that's where I made the second mistake. I'm really trying to keep up the quality of my videos while my nine to five work life is pretty chaotic. I really only have one and a half days to put projects together until my boss comes back from maternity leave. Anyways, I set this in front of my heat vent to help it dry and this actually caused it to crack and it cracked right along the seam where the removable base is. And I think even if I had glued that down, it still would have cracked because there were cracks in other areas. That heat was just forcing it to dry quicker than it naturally would have. But I kept going and I sanded the spackle down to be smoother. I originally wanted to etch a design into the spackle, but with the amount of texture on this, that that wasn't going to look good. I am going to come back to this at a later date. Anyways, I added another thin layer of spackle where the crack was, which I didn't record for some reason and allowed it to dry naturally, not in front of the heat. This time it did not crack apart and I sanded it down again to make this section blend as seamlessly as I could get it. Next, I'm taking Fawn by Waverly. It's a slightly warm tone, medium brown, and I love this color so much. I painted a thick coat all over, making sure to get in all the deep cracks and crevices. Once the paint's dry, I'm taking this white wax, also by Waverly. I really wanna try the DIY white wax because this one's just okay in my opinion, but using a chippy brush, I added a heavy dry brush on top of the Fawn paint and then white it off. I did pour the wax into my paint tray so I don't get the brown paint in it and contaminate it. I love the dimension this added to the planter. This material absolutely needs to be sealed, especially if you plan to keep a live plant in it like I do. To seal it, I use this Rust-Oleum clear enamel in matte. So even though this didn't turn out how I wanted, I still love the way it looks in the end.
Friends, we are so close to hitting 10,000 subscribers and it feels like we just had the 5K giveaway and here we are at another milestone. I do want to do a, another giveaway. This time I'm thinking about doing one of my DIY projects rather than some Dollar Tree craft supplies or something along those lines. So let me know down in the comment box, is that something you would be interested in because I am really excited about it. So stay tuned, that is coming up very soon. If you're interested in seeing some more DIY planters that I've made, check out this video right here and I'll see you in the next one.